Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Uh, alhamdulillah we continue our discussion on the Big Bang, right? And we have uh, covered a little bit on the physics part. Uh, we are actually approaching towards the moment of the Big Bang itself, right? But to understand what really happened, what really happened during that Big Bang moment, right? At the very instance where this universe exploded, right? Or expanded into such vast uh, entity as of now, right? We need to have uh, an idea of uh, also about the scale of time. Right, we have covered a little bit on the physics part, the what they call it, the uh, atomic part, the subatomic particles, and so forth. Right now, we are moving towards the time scale itself. Okay, uh, then with that understanding of the time scale, and then with the understanding of uh, atoms themselves, and also some what they call it, uh, 20th century physics, then we have a better idea on uh, the Big Bang itself, right? And how it happened and how actually it influenced, right? Uh, the expansion of this universe and how it fit in with what Al-Quran says about the creation of the heavens. Okay, now, last week, we have covered this, right? Uh, what do you call it? This is actually a very simplistic diagram of uh, subatomic particles. <clears throat> Whereas we know that uh, it's being divided into the green part is called the leptons. Leptons means particles that cannot be divided into smaller particles. They are the most fundamental particles so far. That's how the physicists and scientists knew, right? It might be in the future that they found out that hey, actually leptons consist of smaller particles. Uh, so as of now, our knowledge ends there. Right, our knowledge states that leptons is the smallest particle, it's not made of smaller particles than themselves. Whereas, right, uh, they call it uh, another particles, right, uh, the bosons, right, uh, no, no, not, no, not the bosons, the fermions, right, the fermions are particles that consist of other particles, all right, and that other particles, uh, scientists say, uh the, those those particles they are called as quarks so you have the orange part right these quarks they are actually six quarks made up of three pairs it comes in pairs right so if up and charm quarks so there's one pair and then top and down quarks is another pair and then strange and bottom quarks right another uh, another pair uh, so the combination of all these six quarks right will produce a particle such as proton. Proton is one of fermion, uh, a of an, what do you call it as uh, a class of fermion particles. All right. So these are the 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 uh, constituents of the fermion particles. Whereas the leptons, the green one, is not considered con uh, made of quarks so far that that scientists have found out. Then we have bosons. Bosons are those particles that carry force. So I've discussed a lot uh, last week about uh, some of the particles. Uh, the most common is photon, which is the blue one here, which is the particle that carries light, electromagnetic waves, right? Magnets, and those are the photons, right? And then we have gluons and Z and W bosons. It's all these, these three particles, they just concern the nucleus of the atom itself whether to bind together proton or to eject the proton out. So those are the particles. There is the fourth particle, they call it the graviton, which is still, a, a, what do you call it? Something that is a theoretical, something that is, has not been found yet, right? Some scientists say that there's no such particle. Some scientists, yes, there might be the particle. So gravity is a force that, that until now, scientists cannot actually uh, uh, what do you call it? Actually, discuss or dissect or understand fully gravity. Is it just a force without particle, or is it a force with particle? Now, if it is a force with particle, then we can have the anti-particle. Uh, this is what I want to say uh, last week, right? I want to discuss about 
about uh, Allah's creations of everything in pairs. Now, uh, when we talk about everything in pairs, it also covers the subatomic particles. It's not just the positive and negative charges of electron and also proton, right? But it's, it's also uh, concerns about those particles themselves. Now, if you look at this chart, right, all these particles, all these leptons actually, right? All these leptons and all these, what you call it as uh, bosons, right? Bosons and also leptons and also quarks, they have their, their antiparticles. Antiparticles means their mirror image of that particle. So when we talk about electron, there is something, there's a particle that's called anti-electron. An anti-electron is basically electron itself, right? It's just a mirror image of the electron. Everything about it is about electron, right? The size, the charges, whatever. Uh, but it is positive, not negative. Electron is negative, but anti-electron is positive. And they have a special name for it. They call it as positron. And so are all other particles like tau, muon, tau neutrino, muon neutrino, electron neutrino, they all have their antiparticles. So we have anti-tau, and then we have anti-muon, we have anti-tau neutrino, anti-muon neutrino, and anti-electron neutrino. And proton, there's also anti-proton, consists of anti-quarks. So it's the opposite of what is the quarks right now. Our universe right now exists in a state of what we consider as the subatomic particles in that in that diagram. But outside there, right, uh, scientists speculate that there might be at the edge of our universe, right, or beyond our universe, right, another set of universe that consists of antiparticles. So they have antiproton, anti-electron, anti-neutron, and everything anti, anti, anti. Now, understanding this is very important because, right, uh, it has to do with what we're going to discuss today, inshallah, about the uncertainty principle. All these are, they call it as modern physics, right? Uh, the discussion about particles and its antiparticles, right, has to do with the discussion on uncertainty principle. Now, when we talk about photon, for example, the particle of light, right? There is also the antiphoton, right? The antiphoton is the opposite of photon. Now, if a particle and its antiparticle meet together, it will explode. It will be disintegrated. Both of them will disintegrate and will uh, become energy, pure energy. So if you have a photon and if you have antiphoton, right, you hit them together, it will produce energy. Okay, so uh, bear that in mind because we're going to go back to that concept later on, right? Uh, so now let's move on to a time scale. We have to understand the time scale because the Big Bang talks about very fine slice of time. It's not just one second, it's a micro, micro, micro second, but it's like you are slicing one second to a hundred slices of time. Right. So it's a very, 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 uh, what do you call it, uh, a quick occurrence, right? Anything that happens at the very right sliced point of time, it is very, very fast. But consider the time scale, you look at this, this arrow. Now, let's start with uh, a time scale of zero year to 100 years. For us, right, if you talk about zero to 100, it's a very, very long time. And then from 100 to 1,000, from 0 to 1,000 is very, 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 very long time, right? But in mathematics, right, 100 years can be just denoted by 10 to the power of 2. It means what? It's, it means that time, 10 times 10. Right? So 10 times 10, you have two zeros, so it becomes 100. Now, if it is 10 to the power of 3, it means that 10 times 10 times 10, so you have three zeros, right? So you put the three zeros after the one, then you get 1,000. So if you have 10 to the power of four years, means that you have four zero, you put one in front, it becomes 
10,000 years. So you have, if you have 10 to the power of five, so we have five zeros and you put one, right? In the beginning, followed by five zeros, then you have 100,000. You put six zeros, 10 to the power of six, you put one in front, you have one million. So just 10 to the power of something, that small number is just a representative of how many zeros you have to put after number one. Okay, now that is in years. And we live in a time scale of years. We don't live in a time scale of seconds. For us, second is very fast. Right? One second, two seconds is a very fast, uh, what do you call it, uh, event or a, a fast moving time. Right? We count by minutes right? or hours or days or months or years. Right? We don't count by seconds. But if you look at seconds, right, zero to 100 seconds is the same mathematical denotion, which is 10 to the power of two. If it is zero to 1000 seconds, it's 10 to the power of three. Now, zero to 100 seconds, right, is just one minute 40 seconds. For us, there's a very short span of time, right, very short span of time, because we live in a time scale of years and months and days and hours and minutes we don't live in the time scale of seconds right our brain right our brain when we perceive things right? when we do things it is more on the time scale the larger time scale of minutes and seconds uh, minutes and hours and, and and days and so forth but we talk about seconds for us is very very fast of although we can actually uh, appreciate right, uh, the movement of seconds, especially if you are doing something that, that is very painful to you, right? even one second is a very long time. right? Uh, but we hardly notice the passing of seconds. But if you have an animal that lives in seconds, not years, not minutes, not hours, but in seconds, for them, zero to 100 seconds is as long as us zero to 100 years. Now, if you look at a slow motion picture, right, of people walking, a very, very slow motion picture. Now, let's say this person is walking, you at least it's a movie, let's say it's a very slow motion movie, a person is walking and behind that person, a bird is flying and behind that bird, uh, what they call a signboard, right? Of some shops with, with LED lights flashing. Now, if you look at the LED lights flashing, it is flashing very fast. If you look at the bird, the bird is flying very fast, right? faster than you can walk. So we walk slower. Now, if you have, if you combine all these things, all these things in one frame and you slow it down, right, to the point that the man walking, is that it is as if it is stationary, right, the, the leg is being raised up and stopped there in mid-air because it's a very, very slow motion movie. But if you look at the bird, the bird is moving. When the man raise up the leg slowly and stop the bird is already moving very fast over there when the leg is stopped in mid-air the bird is still moving see of course it's slower lah. because why because the bird moves very fast and you look at the the then what you call led flashing light right at the signboard even though the man is as if the man is not moving at all but the led light you can see it's flashes right it's flashes on and off, on and off, quite fast. But if you speed it up to normal speed, you can see the man walking at a normal pace and the bird flying very fast and the LED light is flashing very, very fast, right? Faster than even the eye can, can see, right? But if you slow it down, then you can see the flashes, but it flashes very fast. What does it show? It shows that our perception of this real world, right, with our brain, actually, right, it is according to a speed that is slow compared to the speed of 
although sorry the brain speed of other animals such as birds mosquitoes cockroaches their brain right the speed of the brain works faster even though they can't think because you need some other faculty of thinking to to think to 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 understand concept but their brain works very fast right uh, even though they can't think right even though it is like something that is uh, a reflex action for them right but the fact is that their brain right moves very fast and that is why if you are a mosquito and somebody wants to swat you and smack you you can actually see the movement of that hand slowly towards you and you can even laugh right haha -ha, he's going to hit me but before the hand hits me i would fly away why because i can think faster my brain works faster than the man who's trying to slap me i'm a mosquito right so oh i'm a cockroach so i can see the hand moving but for the man he can't see his hand moving because for him the hand is moving very fast because the brain works slow the brain works very slow this is a normal normal speed of human brain our reflex is slower than the reflex of animals most animals okay so for them one second is a very long time for us one second is a very fast time half a second for them is might be a normal time for us half a second is we can even we can even see what more if it is a quarter of a second ah so our brain works slower there are human beings that uh, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala created with a higher brain speed i call it as brain speed because all our brain has speed right it's just like no cars cars also have speed because that is the speed of what they call it the rotation of of the uh, what they call it the engine itself right how fast it goes right that's why they they, they tune the engine so everything has its own working speed our brain has its own working speed if someone has a normal working speed like us so we perceive everything as normal now there are cases when allah created that person with a very fast brain speed in other words the brain process the signal very fast twice three times then the normal brain our normal brain can process so when let's say for example you look at something right the light goes to your eye and the uh, the uh, the light the eye converts uh, the the light to electrical signal and this goes to the brain and the brain starts to start to think right at its own normal pace so by the time the the brain already understand what it's all about that thing that that person is seeing is already passed so that's why when we look at let's say a mosquito right we want to smack the mosquito our brain right is thinking that our hand is going to hit that mosquito and that mosquito is in the middle whereas actually the mosquito already flown away so we we smack at something that is empty because why the mosquito thinks faster the mosquito can see the hand slowly slowly approaching approaching it so the mosquito before the hands reach together the mosquito already flew away but for us we can't see the mosquito flew away because our brain works slower so we look at a frame right and then a few microseconds later we look at that frame our frame changes it's just like a film okay you, you look at this film and then you look at another film it's just like a moving film so it's moving slower so the change of of the change of the frame right from here to here it takes let's say one second or half a second right but in between these frames there are a lot of other frames if you move it faster right you see other frames but you can't see these frames it's just like for example you take an exposure right uh camera exposure you put an exposure right you can you, that, that camera takes a picture of every let's say one two seconds then you put that together you can see everything flows but you know for sure right in between the the taking of the pictures there are a lot of things happening so if the camera takes this picture and then three seconds later take that picture but in between taking those two pictures there are birds flying lightning that picture cannot capture it because why because this frame capture the scene 
and then three seconds later they capture the the, the frame captures the same scene but it won't capture in between the scenes so that is what our brain is we capture this scene and then another scene a microsecond later and then our brain start to process but if our brain works very fast that uh, we have a faster brain speed like some humans then they actually can see what happens in between these two frames of view that we see we see so that person right uh, he wrote right uh, when he took his bath right and open up the shower for us you open up shower then you can see the water falls boom, very fast just like one solid water going down right we can't even see the particles, the small droplets of water coming down. But for him, because his brain works very fast, he can capture more frames per second by his eye and processed by his brain. More frames per second processed by his brain than our normal brain. He can actually see droplets of water falling from the shower head right to his body and right to the floor. He can see that droplets of water falling slowly, slowly, just like just like you see a slow motion uh, a picture because his brain works very fast whereas right there are people who brain speed is slower than a normal brain speed right so for example he uh he wants to take the mrt right this is just an example right so he was waiting and then the mrt door opens he saw the mrt door opens and then he's waiting for people to come in to come out but because his brain is so slow, the next frame that that the next frame that he can see, right, uh, by his brain is actually when the door closes. So he can't see that this whole chunk of people went out, and then it's already empty and time for him to come in. He can't see it because his brain is still processing the last image. So when the the the, the image has been processed, and then the cap the the I send another picture, right frame to the brain and that frame is actually the door closing so by that time he cannot enter the mrt so for him the mrt comes people come out and then the door closed so when is that going to come in but people when people around surround him around him look at him just staring there not moving people are walking and coming he's just standing there he is not moving because the brain is still processing the last image Right. And then when the last image finished, then the new image comes in. By that time, the door of the MRT already closed. Uh, so people who are like that, when he enters the toilet, open up the shower, right? And then the water hits him. Then one, two seconds later, he can still feel the water, but he actually can't see the water falling from the shower head. He can, his, for, from his perspective, the image that he opened up the shower tap, processed by his brain, right? By that time, right, when the brain takes the time to process, the water already goes up to the shower head and falls down. So the next image that he can see is water in front of him. So it is like instantaneous. I open up the tap, then the water is in front of me. Where did the water come from? Suddenly, the, I'm washed with water. No, this is very, very fast, very instantaneous. They just open and the water come out already. Uh, because why? Because the brain processes quite slow. Uh, but for those people who brain processes very fast, he can actually wait for a few microseconds. For him, it's a long time. When he open up, the water is still moving up. So he, for him, he has to wait a few moments. For us, a few microseconds is long enough. But for him, it's... It's quite long one microsecond is very long for him because his brain is processing the image very fast so he can actually see the water goes up or feel the water goes up and then see the water goes to the shower and then the, the first droplet form and then falls on him and then slowly the gravity pulls and then hit his body he can see that because his brain is processing the images very fast so he lives in a world of microseconds Whereas normal people live in a world of minutes or just seconds, right? Uh, so for those people who live in the world of microseconds, right? Everything is slow for him. Everything is slow. That one second, so many things can happen. So many things he can see, even though he can't do anything, but he can see many, many things in just one second, right? 
uh, things flying and and birds here and mosquito will take off and then the flutter of the the uh, the wings of the bird he can actually see goes up going up going down going up going down but for us it's very fast up down up down up down because we capture right we capture frames by by one second one second but he captures print in let's say a micro microsecond so you can see right the the, the wings goes up so everything for him in this world is very slow whereas the opposite spectrum those who live in not seconds but in minutes right for him everything's moving very fast everything is instantaneous i see the bird here then suddenly the bird is already up there flying where did the bird fly well the bird is very fast suddenly it's already up in the air whereas the bird took a few sec a few microseconds to to fly up or even one or two seconds to fly up for his brain right his brain takes more than that to process the image more time to process the image so for him the world is moving very fast but for those who have a faster brain speed, the world is moving very slow. So this has to do with subatomic particles. Why? Because subatomic particles, right, they live in a world of micro microseconds. So they come into existence, right? And then in less than a quarter of a second later, that particle disappears. It becomes another particle it's destroyed. So the lifespan of some of some atomic particles, right, is measured in micro microseconds. How micro it is? Now you look at the third arrow here, right, it is moving this way. If it is a zero second, right, and you go, you, you reverse the time, right, at 10 minus two, which is 100 second before the zero second, at 10 minus 3 is equal to 1 minus 1,000 second before 0 second. So if this is the, the, the end line, right? This is the, what they call it, uh, the finishing line, right? And a particle, a subatomic sub particle appeared, right? In, let's say, 10 minus 2 second, it appeared. And then it disappeared in 10 minus 1 second, which is, minus 10 second before the time right which is very very what do you call it a very slice uh, a very fine slice of of second it is like you know you take one second right you take one second and you divide it into 10 that is one tenth of a second that is minus 10 to the power of one okay, so that is one tenth of a second before the event itself, right before the finishing line. Now, if you take that second, you divide into 100, and that is 10 to the power of 2 seconds, minus 10 to the power of 2. So it's a very, very slice fine of time. And if you take that one second, you divide into 1,000 parts, right? So each of that is 10 to the power of minus 3. Now, particles live in that very slice point of time. Right, so you have, let's say, uh, one second you divide to 1,000 parts. And the particle appears here. Right? You have 1,000 parts before you reach one second. 1,000 parts here. So the particle actually appeared or appears in, in this part, right? In uh, zero second, let's say, for example, zero second. And then the particle will disappear after, let's say, 500 slices of time. You divide one second into 1,000 slices of time, right? the particle disappears in 500 slices of time. It means that this particle right, disappears in half a second. But if that particle right, appears in zero second, right, not just one second, this is one second, it's zero second, and you slice it into 1,000, but the particle disappears in the second slice of time, it means that not even half a second, which is 500 slices of time, right? Uh, there's half a second, but it disappears in the second slice of time. It means that the, the lifespan of the particle for us is very, very short, but for that particle, actually I live a full life of two slices of time two slices of time. It's just like, you know, you take it out, you change the second to years. 
you will have zero year to 1,000 years, the first arrow. So you divide into 1,000 slices, right? So if somebody born in zero year and then died in the 500 slices of time, okay, the 500 slices of time, then actually that person lives a very long life, which is 500 years, right? Which is 500 years. But if, let's say, right, uh, that person uh, actually, what do you call it? Uh, born in zero second, as or zero year, and then died in the second slice of time, the second slice of time, it means that that person died at the age of two, which is quite a long time for us, right? for human beings, at the second year, right? Because that is our normal year. So you change years to second and you have right, a particle that was born in zero second and then died in two slices of time later or three slices of time later between zero and one second. Right, so that particle actually, in terms of second, is quite long, but for us we can't perceive it because it is less than a second. Uh, so that is actually the micro parts of of second. I hope we can get the picture, right? Because we are talking, of, we're going to talk about uh, very slices of time, which ten minus two, ten minus three, and so forth, so forth. Right? We're going to use exponential figure, right, when we talk about uh, the Big Bang, right, from the smallest. To the biggest okay now let's move on all right uh this is what i meant by trying to understand uh the thin slices of time okay <clears throat> just hold on i think my my uh internet is not stable right now okay i think okay i'm connecting to another and then the Wi-Fi. All right, I think it's stable now. Okay, I think all of you are still with me. You can hear me, right? Okay, okay, good. Now, once we understand that thin slices of time, and you, if you want to, you want to have a, a I mean, a, a very uh, a, a real sense of that small, small slices of time right i encourage you to watch youtube of this what do you call it as uh this this youtube of these two person right i forgot the name of the channel uh but these two person actually captures or record things in very very slow motion right so they they, they did a lot of money silly things whatever trying to explode things or throw balloons or hit their face with with football uh yeah yes you can look for this channel the slow mo guys the slow mo guys right slow motion right? slow mo guys so these two persons right these two guys actually they have these channels and of course they will a lot of profit on it a lot of no, I mean, all of their movies are con uh, just, just concerns this uh, taking, taking pictures or, or, or a video of things in slow motion. So I watched this one movie, right, where they uh, exploded this, this house or this building, right, they put off of fuel in there, whatever, gunpowder, whatever. And then after that, they threw fire or whatever to cause explosion, okay? So as the person who threw it ran away, the house exploded. When the house exploded, the gas expanded very fast. But what happened to the guy? The guy actually trying to jump down, right? And, and lie down flat on the, on the floor because things are flying away. But that guy, right, this is very slow motion, right, in a one the hundred and thousands of a second, that guy seems to be floating on air, not moving, stationary up there, whereas the house with all the things inside there move out, expanded very fast with all the bits of wood and, and gases and fire, it just emitted out from the house right, very fast, even though 
the, the, the it is it is a very slow motion picture so that guy floating on air same time frame right but because it is actually uh, live in a different in a longer time scale rather than that that ball of fire which is moving moving very fast so it didn't capture the man hit the floor the man actually float on that and then the fire starts to engulf everything else so that it that shows you right uh what you call it as the different uh time frame the different time frame for uh what you call it uh for everyone in this world so time is actually relative Time is actually relative. And that is very, very interesting. Because why? Because everything is within Allah's knowledge. Allah plans everything. Okay. So for us, right, uh, things are not happening much, right? Because we can't see things happening much. But if the time rate, the time frame is being slowed down that much, actually in what we can we think doesn't happen that much a lot of things happen and everything happens according to allah's plan so in one second let's say for example right i just move my hand like this it's one second for us for all of us it is it is quite fast just yes, just a movement of or a flicker of a flicker of fingers very fast but if it is slow motion right before my finger goes up a lot of things happening Right, atoms flying and the air around surrounding changes in, in, in composition and so forth before my finger goes to its second position there. But for us, it's very fast, right? It's very, very fast. But if it is slowing down, a lot of things happening. So where is where does Allah's plan stop with regards to uh time? Nothing, right? Uh there is actually unlimited, uh, what you call it? No, I don't say unlimited. There is a limit in this world about time, but uh, everything happens in in very fast sequence of time that we can't perceive it happens at all. It is like instantaneous, a very instantaneous event. A very interesting thing uh, about this different time frame right for us and for other creatures right actually mentioned by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in al quran if you look up in surah an naml right uh, that is in juice 19 right to the end of the Jews, uh, 19 uh, nabi sulaiman uh, gathered all his armies from the genes and also from humans and animals and then Nabi Sulaiman right, asked all of his armies and people and his of course his uh, what do you call it uh, his subjects and asked them who can bring to me in front of me right right now the castle of Balqis. And Balqis is the queen. Uh, in Bible they call it Queen Sheba, I think, something like that. Right. But he she actually ruled Yemen during that time in Sana'a. So she was traveling from Yemen all the way to, to Sham or in Palestine, right? Uh, to pay homage to, to Nabi Sulaiman. So Nabi Sulaiman was asking, who can bring me her castle before she even arrives here? So the Ifrit said, right, I can bring you her castle before you even stand up. Why? Because for the gene, his time frame. Is different from human time frame right the gene can do a lot of things in a very short space of time whereas we can do much in that uh, same period of time so the gene said i can do a lot of things i can bring the, the castle all the way from yemen all the way and put it in front of you but then a human being who is a pious person Right, uh, said to Nabi Sulaiman alayhi salam, Ana atika bihi qabla an yartadda ilayka tarfuk. So, this pious person said this, a believer person said, I can bring her castle before you even blink your eyes. See, that is a, a very finer slice of time.
compared to what the ifrit gene can manage. So the, the ifrit gene time frame right, is longer than the time frame that can be managed or lived by that, by that pious person. So that pious person, although he's a human being, right, he was a human being, but Allah endowed him with a different time frame, right? A short space of time for us, but for him is a long period of time. So he managed to bring right, the castle from, from Yemen all the way to uh, Palestine, to the place where, where Nabi Sulaiman uh, resided. And Nabi Sulaiman suddenly saw the castle in front of his eyes before he even blinked. So in other words, Nabi Sulaiman lived in a world like us, a normal time frame, but that pious person, not sure whether he's a prophet or not, right? But Allah SWT endowed him, right, with that, what do you call it, uh, ability to live in a very short slices of time. So he can actually manage, but for him, one second is very long, very, very long. It is as long as, let's say, one day for a person. Right, because he can do so much and he can see so much in just one second. That is what uh, people say, or people give the term as Barakatul Awqat or the blessings of time, ber Berkat Masa. And this is a gift Allah SWT gave to a lot of his pious servants or the walis or those who are close to Allah. They can achieve a lot right, in a short, a short period of time because their time frame is different from a, another person's time frame right? and I, I remember this i always share this right uh my late uh teacher uh sheikh umar khatib related the story when he was in in masjid al-haram and he said that at one time he he entered masjid al-haram and he wanted to perform and of course he he wanted to perform the solat sunat uh two rakaat right uh tahiyatul masjid and when he stood in front of of Kaaba want to perform the solat, he heard this person who sat beside him started to recite Al Quran from Surah Al Baqarah, and he knew that Surah Surah Al Baqarah, the early part of Surah Al Baqarah, because of course Sheikh Omar memorized the Quran, so he knew how oh, this person just started reciting the Quran. So okay, never mind. So he performed his solat. After finishing two rakat, he gave his salam, and he heard this person beside him, right, who said who just started reciting Surah Al Baqarah. This person is finishing Juz Amma. Is finishing the Quran from Wat Duha onwards towards the end. And so Sheikh Omar asked him, and he related the story to us when we were student. And he said, he asked him, did you jump? Right? I heard when I started to salat, you recited Surah Al-Baqarah. And now you are finishing your, your, your uh, I mean, you are reciting towards the end of, of our Quran. But then the person said, no, I recited the whole of our Quran. You were there, I started Baqarah, but then I recited all the way, you haven't finished your salat. Now I'm finishing my, my Khatam al-Quran already. You see, how long does it take for us to perform two rakat? Let's put it three minutes or five minutes if you recite surah and so forth. Let's say five minutes. In five minutes, that person can finish 6,236 verses of al-Quran. Different time frame. People call this Barakatul al qad the blessings of time. But it's actually that person Allah endowed with a, with a different time frame, different time frame. He lives in a different time frame. He looks at things, right? Whereas we look at things as normal events for him, right? That normal time is very, very long. He can, he can do a lot of things in that within same time period of, uh, the, the same period of time. So that is actually what uh, is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and this actually, Alhamdulillah, is, is a gift uh, for those who, who, who are close to Al-Quran, actually. Uh, and I, I witnessed personally myself, right, uh, this one memorizer of Quran, right, teacher of Quran, he memorized the Quran quite already, uh, an old person. Uh, he was standing with me, and then I heard that he started to recite uh, Surah Al-An'am, the beginning of Surah Al-An'am, right? And so he started to recite. Okay, then after that, we... There's some things that we did, and then after that, about uh, 10 minutes later, right? And when I met him, he was already moving to the next surah, which is Surah Al Araf. And you know, Surah Al Anam is quite long, right? This is almost a juice and a half, one juice and a half. 
And he already started Surah Al-A'raf. And I heard it. I heard him starting with Surah Al-An'am. Now he's, he's reciting Surah Al-A'raf in just within 10 to 15 minutes. So I asked him, said, did you skip? Right? Uh, just now I heard you recited Surah Al-An'am. Now you're reciting Surah Al-A'raf. He said, no. Aja, I finished already. I finished reciting Surah Al-An'am. Now I'm doing my Surah Al-A'raf. In just about 10 to 15 minutes, he finished one whole more than one juice of al-quran uh, so that is actually a gift from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us it's impossible because we live in a normal world but they live in a different time frame right it's a faster time rate a faster change a uh, faster rate of time change rate of time whatever you call it lah, right uh, than us uh, so that is basically what happened during the early moments of the big bang you look at this, right? This is called as the agreed part of the standard model of the Big Bang, which is actually agreed by almost all astrophysicists and scientists and whatever you want to call them. Uh, this is according to calculations and, and proved by experiments, okay? Uh, by particle uh, bombardment of, of experiments and so forth, and we don't need to go into details. But according to this model of the Big Bang, the first star started to shine about 800,000 years after the Big Bang. Not even 1 million years, right? It's 800,000 years after the Big Bang that the first star started to shine. Now, you go backwards. We are going backwards, okay? From bottom to top, to top sorry. 300,000 years before the Big Bang, right? Electrons attached to hydrogen and helium nucleus to form the first atoms. So atoms, they were first formed 300,000 years after the Big Bang. It's a very, very long time, right? So before that, there were no atoms. When there are no atoms, what do this universe have? They have only particles, subatomic particles. We have neutrons and we have protons. And then we have, according to calculation, we have this percentage of neutrons and protons. And the calculations I showed, I showed, so I showed that after that neutrons, we will attach to protons and produce the helium nucleus. And then after that, uh, after 300,000 years, right, then ultimately they, uh, the universe is filled with 20%, 26% helium nucleus and 74% hydrogen nucleus. But this thing happened at 0 0.2 second. 0 0.2 second, not even one second. It is, you know, one second, you divide into five. So 0 0.2 second is one slice of that five, five slices of time between zero and one second. All right? Now, you're not approaching zero because zero is the moment of creation, the, the moment of the Big Bang. So you have 0 0.2 second, right? This is one slice of time, you divide into five. Now, if you divide that zero to one second to 100 slices of time, right, then at 0 0.2, uh, sorry, at that one slice of time, which is 10 to the power of minus two, which is one slice of that time, if you divide to 100, just not divide to five, now you divide to 100, right, that one slice of, of time, what happened? What was the event? Neutrinos was bombarded they were bombarded by neutrons and produced electrons and protons. And so now we can see that electrons and protons came from neutrinos. I'm sorry, you come, it came from neutrons. So neutrons is actually a combination of electron and proton that I mentioned last week. So when it's being bombarded by another particle called neutrinos, these neutrons will break down, right? It, it will it will break down into its composition particles, which is electrons and protons. So electrons and protons were produced at that one slice of time. If you divide zero to one second, you divide into 100 slices of time. That's how very fine slice of time, right? Not approaching zero yet. Now, if you divide from zero to one second, you divide this one second, you divide into 100 million slices of time, phew, 100 million slices of time, this very, very slice of time, right? So you take just one slice of it, right? And that is very, very close to zero, not yet zero, but very, very close to zero because it's a very, very slice, very fine slice of time, right? 
you might divide one zero to one second, just one second, you divide to 100 million slices. So one slice of time, right? The first slice of time, that's when this very, what do you call it, fundamental particles of, of uh, subatomic particles appeared, which is leptons and quarks. And leptons, right? Uh, an example of leptons is uh, electrons. Right? So electrons actually appeared in that very, very early part of the Big Bang, before zero, yeah, right? This is one slice of time. I hope you can you can follow and try to imagine. Uh, it's quite difficult actually, right? To to imagine a very very slice, uh, a very slice time here. Okay. So leptons and quarks they said appeared during that time, which is ten to the power of minus nine second. At the ten to the power of minus ten second which is you take one second, you divide into 10 billion, 10 billion slices. One second, you divide into 10 billion slices. And the first slice after zero, that's when photon, boson, and gluon particles appear. They are, they call it the, all the force particles. So photons and gluons appeared in that very, very slice point of time, 10 to the power of minus 10 second. Now, what happened before that, right? What happened before that is just, what they call it, uh, an open discussion between scholars, between astronomers and scientists. They, uh, they speculated, they have a lot of theories, right? A lot of models, uh, but all these models and theories came from their mathematical equations and this mathematics cannot be understood by normal people like us only abnormal people like them they can understand so uh, it's more like a playground for the scientists to play with their equations right but does it really happen right what, whatever they propose whatever they, they theorize that is actually something that is being discussed and not agreed upon by all scientists so what happened before that? That we have to continue our discussion next week, inshallah. Okay, so we have covered the standard model of the Big Bang, which is at the very, very early part of the Big Bang, which is 10 to the power of minus 10 second, right to 800,000 years from the appearance of the first force particle to the appearance of the first star. That is agreed upon. Before that, it's a point of contention and we'll continue inshallah next week. Okay, all right, so let's see whether there is any, uh, what do you call it, questions in the chat box. Chat box. Uh, wow, okay, there are two questions here. Hmm. Can we use the same concept of time through particles? You explain the lifespan of humans, example, the lifespan of Ibrahim and Salam, Nabi Musa and Salam versus our time, Nabi Musa and Salam. As our lifespan becomes shorter due to the faster movement of time, hence the hour is our lifetime linked to the lifespan of the universe based on Kiyama. Okay, the second question is, uh, heard of some things that the time now in modern day passes faster now than before. Is it just our lifestyle or is it got to do with the time spinning faster nearing towards Kiyama? Okay, now, uh, these two questions are related. Right, I've got to uh, what they call it correct some of these misconceptions here. The greatest mis misconception is that those people in the past, the people of Nabi Musa alayhi salam, the people of Nabi Noah, whatever the, the, the previous uh, people, they live to a very long, very old age. They live very long. Their lifespan is very long. How long? Some say hundreds of years. All right. The proof is, they say, look at what Allah says in Al-Quran, right? In Surah Rum, Allah SWT talks about Nabi Nuh alayhi salam. Uh, and so Nabi Nuh lived with his people for 1,000 years, less 50. So it means that it is 950 years he lived on this earth, right? With his people. That is the only instance in Al-Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the lifespan of any people, any humans, right? Of course, Allah mentions about, about uh, Ashabul Kafi, right? Uh, the people of the cave 
who lived who slept for 300 years but how long did they live we're not sure maybe 310 years their age when they died 320 years we're not sure right uh, but uh, Allah SWT never mentioned their lifespan right but only that we know now because of that right uh, people a lot of people have this thinking that people in the past they are tall people and then they live very long age well in actual fact this thing this belief that the past people they are huge people and they live long age actually this comes from bible it is not in the quran it is not in the islamic tradition or it comes from rasulullah there is no hadith that says that Nabi Musa salam and those people in the past, they live very, very old age or have longer lifespan than us. Nothing. It all comes from the Bible or from the Israelian. And it found its way in the Islamic tradition, eh, whereas scholars after scholar, generation after generation, just took it and put it inside the books of Tafsir, so much so that then scholars that come after them never check whether this comes from where, just explain to the masses you no know, people in the past they live long age and they are very tall and very you see taller than us right and this and that and nabi adam salam was 60 cubits high right and therefore then people get shorter and shorter until our time it's not supported by any evidence physical evidence at all in fact all the physical evidences point towards the other direction people in the past right? They are not tall. They are short. You want proof? You go to Egypt, you see all those pharaohs who lived 3,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, mummified pharaohs. How tall were they? They were much shorter than us. In fact, we Singaporeans, we are taller than them. Average height for males in Singapore is 1.7 and above. 1.7 to 1.8. Average uh, height of of Singaporean females is about 1.6 to 1.7 or 1.65 to 1.75. You know how tall were the Egyptians back then, right? 4,000 years ago, they were about 1.65 meters, 1.5 meters. For us, they were small. Ramses was considered as the pharaoh of Nabi Musa, salam. he was just about 1.65 meters. If he stands beside me, right, he's, he just reached to the height of my shoulder, I can just joto his kepala if I want to. Right? It's that short. So people in the past never, people find, never archaeologists find uh, what they call it, fossil skeletons of humus homo sapiens that live 1,000, 3,000 or even 10,000 years ago of great heights. In fact, they are shorter than us. Why? Because they lack nutrition. We have more nutrition. We take more nutrients. We have healthier foods than them. So we grow bigger than them. Just look at us, just look at Singaporeans and Indonesians. On average, Singaporeans are much taller. They are, we are taller than the, the Indonesians. We are bigger than Indonesians. Because why? Because we are a first world country, right? We have healthier food choice rather than them. Uh, so we are bigger than them, right? Uh, so our babies, look at our, our forefathers, our grandfathers and us. Different in height. Actually, Singaporeans are getting taller, right? Compared to those people, Singaporeans in the 40s and 50s and 60s. And so therefore, right, uh, those stories that those people in the past are very tall, actually they came from the Bibles. The Bible talk about that. So be careful when we quote all this sort of thing. And the same goes with age. The Bible said that the kings in the past, they live in 600 years, 300 years, 500 years, they have a specific age for them. And somehow or rather this got into the Islamic literature of, of, of Tafsir, and people thought this actually came from the Prophet Sallallahu but never from the Prophet Sallallahu It came from Kabul Ahbar, right? Uh, this rabbi that embraced Islam, Dunita Afna Sayyidina Umar, Nukhatab Radhi and and shared a lot of things that he learned or he got it from, from his scriptures, the Christian and the Jewish scriptures. And then he shared with the Muslims and the companions and the followers of companions took it and passed to the, to the next generation and so forth and so forth and found its way in the writings of scholars and desert. Right, and you look up, right, uh, all these books, they have all these narrations, but doesn't come from the Quran, doesn't come from, from, from the Prophet. Sallam. It came from Kabul Ahmad. What about Nabi Adam, I said, 60 cubits tall? It's actually the Bible. The Bible says that Nabi Adam, right, was 60 cubits tall. 
And there is this hadith in Sahih Muslim that said that uh, Nabi Adam was 60 cubits tall. You know how, long, how tall is 60 cubits? How high is 60 cubits? It is about if uh, close to about 30 meters, 25 to 30 meters. If you have somebody that, that tall, right, it is as high as 11 to 12, or let's say 15 story high flat. Imagine a person that high and all the trees are smaller than that, right? Feeding it is going to be a big problem. Number one, everything is small. When he walks, he will trample on everything. Number two, you can't have a creature that walks with that height because the center of gravity will be so high, that creature will fall down anytime. What more if you have a creature that has a spine, a, a flexible spine, right? Our spine of a homo sapiens. Our spine can bend here, this and that. So our spine is actually consists of small bones, right? Uh, put one top of the other, right? Attached, uh, by, strengthened by the muscles, right? So it's just like that. So it's supple, you can move here and there. But if you have that tall and it's big and it's heavy, right? And the CG, center gravity is very high, that, that what you call it, how big that, that bone is, that spine, it cannot support that creature. It cannot bend. You can only have that tall creature if, let's say, right, that creature has a spine consists of solid mass of bone or calcium. So that creature must stand upright and cannot move. Once it moves, it will fall down. Just like a flat, right? If you move a flat, it will fall down because the CG is very high. It must be firm on the ground. So physically, scientifically, it is not possible. You look at dinosaurs, they are big creatures, right? Taller than us. But how tall it is? Just about five meters high, six meters high, not even 30 meters, not even 10, not even 10 to 15 meters. And even so, right, all those uh, horrible dinosaurs, right, they were on four legs. They cannot walk on two legs because they cannot support. The spine cannot support. The spine must be supported by four, four legs. If you be two legs, then you fall down. That is why tall uh, human beings, right, they have to walk on, they have to use sticks to walk, to support them. Their legs, their spine cannot support them. Those who are 2 meters and above, 2.3, 2.4 meters and above, right? When they walk, they need to use cane to walk and they cannot live for long. They will die. Because why? Because of the gravitational pull of their organs. Their organs will be compressed, right? Their, their back cannot support. There goes their life. Right? They don't have long lifespan. So it is actually a false narrative. But what about the hadith in Sahih Muslim that talks about that? Well, scholars found out that actually it came from Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu and Abu Hurairah right, uh, narrated in other hadith the stories of Israelis from Kabul Ahbar. So it actually came from Kabul Ahbar, which is the rabbi, Jewish rabbi that, that embraced Islam, Ritaf Sena Umar rather than from the Prophet sallallahu And that is actually in the Bible. Uh, so be careful. So actually, right, uh, uh, our life, in general, modern people's lives is longer than the lives of those people in the past because of the good nutrition and good health we have. We conquer disease, this and that. Yeah, on average, right? We live in 80 years, 90 years. Uh, the more advanced the country is, uh, the longer with the lifespan of this, of this, of this population. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what about the hadith that uh, time is moving faster? Now, physically, time is not moving faster. Actually, time is moving slower. Why? Because the Earth is losing energy as it revolves orbit around the Earth. Uh, sorry, orbit around the Sun. Right? It loses energy. When it loses energy, the effect is that the rotation of the Earth gets slower. It is. It all goes to do with the uh, conservation of angular momentum, right? In physics, so it it, it it actually orbits slower. But how slow? Just one second or less than a second slower. Every year, our Earth moves slower around the Sun and it is rotating slower. In the past, we found out that in one day, there was 23 to 22 hours of rotation. Now it's about 24 hours, close to 24 hours. Soon it'll be longer and longer, right? So the Earth orbit and the Earth rotation, right, uh, is getting slower as time goes on. So it's not getting faster. But why Rasulullah SAW said faster? It is because of our perception. We are so busy in this life. Suddenly it's night time. 
and we've been planning in when it comes time we plan what to do tomorrow all the business we have to do right all the affairs of this way we have to do and we we devote ourselves to complete our our task that we have set upon to do and suddenly it's night time tomorrow and then after that one week have passed and then one year passed and said wow suddenly i have white hair where does this white hair come from how come i'm just just now i just remembered i was young now i'm old already what happened to me we are so busy with life we start working and suddenly hey, it's retirement age that's how busy we are so this is actually perception of, of our life because we're busy we take someone and put in put him in prison time will move very slow for him especially if he's there in confinement for 23 hours and you put a clock in front of him that's the greatest torture for him we will see the second moves very slowly and time is very very slow because it's nothing to do okay uh, so it's actually perception now uh, so whether it's our choice whether we're to fill in our time with things that are beneficial for us uh, in our afterlife or not it's up to us it's our choice how to get those baraka in time is a gift from Allah and Allah only give those gifts to those who are close to him so get close to him right devote ourselves to him right uh, recite the Quran often and inshallah you will get that baraka of time right every morning when we wake up we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that baraka of time right and that is what salat duha and salat ishraq or uh, what you call duha ishraq is the same thing right what those two salat sunat early day early in the morning right it's all about is what asking for Allah from Allah the baraka of that day so we can fit in a lot more right in our time rather than other people so that is what uh, actually uh, baraka in time but that is just our perception our ability to do it like this gift from Allah okay so I stop here inshallah uh, we'll continue next week all right, thank you very much. We end with Tasbih Kafara and Suratul Asr. Subhanahu wa bihamdika, shiru ala ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubi ilaik. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim wa al-asri wa al-salam fi khusr ila alladhin amin wa amdu salihat wa tawasuri al-haqq wa tawasuri al Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you next week.